Trump coming to you from my home in New York. As we approach the fall election, more and more black Americans are asking the Democrat Party, what have you done for me lately? Joining me is a Democratic Assemblyman from Georgia, Vernon Jones. Vernon, it's great to get you on. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Laura. I'm glad to be here. Now, you're in Georgia now, but I just learned that you are a, a born and raised North Carolina a, you know, a man from birth, so we share that in common. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's always great to get the perspective of, of people from my home state, but now you're in Georgia. And for anyone that doesn't know your story, as a longtime Democrat office holder in Georgia, you decided to come out and say, I'm endorsing President Donald Trump. Tell me why you did that and what was the reaction that you got from that? Well, first of all, uh, it was clear and the choice was obvious. Donald Trump gets results and he says he does what he said he's going to do. And that's impressive because there hasn't been a president in my lifetime that has actually campaigned on issues and then came and followed up on those issues. And, and that was impressive. And I've been a chief executive of a large urban county, county executive. And it really means a lot when you have an established record of, of accomplishment. And this president has a record of accomplishments. Certainly he's helped everybody across the board in every demographic category. And particularly for African Americans, what he's done for Opportunity Zone District, what he's done for prison reform with the First Step Act, and me attending, uh, being from North Carolina, as you said, I attended a historical black college, proud graduate of North Carolina Central University. Yeah has done a major, major uh, benefit for me in my subsequent life in terms of my achievements. And so President Trump recognized how important it was to address those issues. And when he made that comment in Flint, Michigan about what do you have to lose, man, a shockwave went through me. And, I'm, and wow. I said then, how prophetic was that comment? And so uh, obviously I'm on board and was on board when he first ran and I want to do everything I can to help him get reelected. He's good for the country. I love it. I love it. Well, let me just tell everyone again, you're a Democrat. And I imagine that whenever you decided to come out and say, I support Donald Trump, I'm voting for Donald Trump. I imagine the reaction from your party maybe wasn't that great. What kind of reaction did you get from your own party? But I guess in general, what kind of reaction did you get? Because I've heard a lot of positive things uh, happen to people after they finally uh, come out and say, you know what, I do support this president. What happened? Well, first of all, um, there comes a time when you have to put your country before your party. And me endorsing and supporting President Trump, anybody with a half of a brain can see that he's much more qualified, much more capable, have an established track record, been in only three and a half years, and he's done more than Joe Biden has done in the past 40 some odd years, including him having eight years as vice president. Right. I didn't leave my party, my party left me. I'm a conservative Democrat, uh, but I and I believe in fiscal responsibility, but I'm a practical person. I have a reputation of working on both sides of the aisle. I think that's good. Again, when I was a county executive and I commanded a large police department and other types of services, when we provided those services, we didn't care what your party affiliation was. It was about getting a job done and providing uh, government services to you. Um, the Democratic Party brags and talk about being a part of inclusion and diversity. Well, they really are in terms of color and in terms of gender and orientation, but not when it comes to an independent thinking black man or woman with conservative leaning. And when you step out and you voice your concern, they get their agent provocateurs to reach out and attack you, including the liberal media mob, to sort of whip you back in place. And that's why I made it clear. Um, I'm, I'm off that plantation. I turned the lights off. Somebody else can have that suite now. I am open. I am vocal. Uh, I'm going to stay where I am, and I'm going to give the Democratic Party hell because they have become a party of bigotry. And, and that is not what this party started out to be. Yeah. Well, it's listen, it's really brave to do what you did. It's not easy, no matter who you are in this country, I think, to be a vocal Trump supporter, because to your point, you get a, a lot of pushback from the mainstream media, uh, from, you know, so many people out there who, unfortunately, I think have been a little brainwashed by what has been told to them about this president. Um, I think it's interesting, though, you pointed out some really incredible things that this president has done. President Donald Trump has done for the black community all across this country. 
And it's interesting when you look at the fact that it seems like Democrat leaders have gotten away with failing black America for so long. So how did this happen, Vernon? How did we end up here? Well, first of all, we've been a captive audience. And the Democratic Party has felt like they don't need to address the issues that are important to their primary base of supporters. Just like they do for everybody in this country, they put illegals before everybody, before every American. There are Americans right. right now who do not receive a stimulus check that needs it. But here's Nancy Pelosi and that far left crowd with their radical and socialist views. They want to give uh, $1,200 to people who are here illegally. Now, I support immigration, but I support immigration that's based on laws and enforcing those laws because we are a country of immigrants. But we can't have open borders. And, and the thing about the Democratic Party, anybody who decides to think independently for themselves, especially African-Americans, you get whipped back into place. There are a lot of African Americans feel like I feel. Uh, P. Diddy, uh, the, uh, I guess he's calling himself Diddy now, the, the rapper. He's yeah. come out and no longer take us from a, for for our grant for for take our vote for granted. Right. Now here's what's interesting too. Joe Biden helped write the crime bill that incarcerated masses That's and masses right. of African Americans, uh, men and women, and and gen people in general actually. And President Trump has come along in just three and a half years. He did what they. We're talking about doing, or maybe some didn't even want to do it, but he got it done with bipartisan support. And that made a difference because it was, it was a, it was a piece of legislation that allowed families to be reunited and connected and get job and job, have job opportunities so they can be productive citizens. And so th that's what I like about this president. But Laura, I want to be clear. This president has helped every category. That's right. But, but particularly African Americans can, African Americans can say for the first time, and I know in the past 60 years, that Donald Trump has had an agenda that helped African Americans in terms of unemployment, to get them employed, get their small businesses off the ground. He restored that funding for historical black colleges and then wrote it into law. That's unheard of. No other president has ever done that in the history of this country. Yep. And so those are just basic things, the opportunity zone districts, when you see a lot of communities with blighted areas, again, having been a chief executive of a county, had to do economic development and, and housing uh, development, that, uh, that Opportunity Zone District legislation allowed these communities to get investments and allow businesses and individuals to come in and invest, and the people can have their own neighborhoods and communities renovated and restored where it's a quality place to live. And this president ha has gotten it done. He's been as solid as Arabian Mountain uh, in terms of his agenda. And uh, I'm not confused. It's not about being loyal to Donald Trump. I am loyal to his agenda. And his agenda helps everybody. And that's what he wants, people loyal to his agenda. And I can appreciate what he's doing. Yeah. And, and this is a really critical election, I think, that we're coming up to, Vernon. If you had to talk to people out there in this country who maybe for a second would think, well, you know what? The things this president has done really have helped so many people. He really was great when it came to the economy. He did the things he said he would do. He's making our country safer. He's leveling the playing field with trade across the world. All of these things seem like positive ideas to me, but I'm being told I shouldn't support him. What's your message to people out there? If they're thinking for a second, maybe I should come out and say I support Donald Trump, but I'm, I'm a little nervous about it. Anything you would say to them? Well, first of all, I would tell them to stop watching CDNC. <laughs> Stop watching CNN, Rachel Maddow, MSB, MSNBC, all those liberal channels because they do not want to talk about the president's record. That's They're right. the ones who want you to think that the president's a racist. They're the ones who want you to think that the president, it's kind of interesting because he put our country before other countries, that he's some white nationalist. Well, he is a nationalist. I'm a nationalist. We, right. all, we want our country to have uh, what it needs first. You know, I'm a country boy and we stay back home on the farm it's a poor cow that won't lick her own calf. If you're more concerned investing in other countries and not investing in your own, then, then you don't have a place uh, being in that office because America is first. How can we have others if we don't have ourselves first? And so this president, I would tell people too, look, go to Fox. One thing about Fox, Fox gives more balanced information. Um, they, they talk about what's going on with the deep state, which has been covered up by the liberal media. Uh, right. So they can see how and what the FBI has been doing. And I'll say to black people, too, think about it. We have been complaining about how the FBI and the deep state have been treating African-Americans, uh, starting with J. Edgar Hoover, from Marcus Garvey to the tapings and the spine of Dr. King and many others. So 
this has been going on for years and years. How can you just overlook this? Uh, look at your bank accounts prior to the epidemic. Did you have more in your savings? Uh, did you have a better job? Were your wages going up? Um, and nobody can doubt that. And then ask, what did Joe Biden do for you? Other than put you in jail in mass conservation and just left you there. He, locked, he just locked the door and threw away the key. And so it's very simple. Um, but again, I want everybody, whether black or white, think about this. Wouldn't you rather have, wouldn't you rather have uh, President Trump from the Oval Office than to have Joe Biden from his basement? I think it's <laughs> clear. <laughs> well, we know he's been hiding out in the basement, Vernon. Uh, and maybe he doesn't even really know where he is. That's no telling with Joe Biden these days. Listen, I really want to say um, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. It's not easy, like I said, to come out and be a vocal Trump supporter, especially when you are a Democrat. And um, I think it's so refreshing. And I think this is a your message is one that I think a lot of people need to hear because there are a lot of people out there that are scared to say they support this president. But when they see, you know, bold action like what you did, um, I, I think it inspires a lot of people to, to stand up and say, you know what, I'm not going to be silent anymore. I'm going to say that I support this president because he has done exactly what he said he would do. He's, he's kept his promises and he is making America great. So uh, good luck with everything in Georgia. Maybe I'll see you back home in North Carolina. I hope so. Uh, but I really want to say thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Well, Laura, if I can close by this, uh, this president has did a good job prior to the pandemic and during this crisis, he's doing an amazing job because no other president had to deal with this in, in modern times. That's right. He's doing an amazing job of striking a balance between providing public safety, saving lives, getting resources to communities and, and governments and states. At the same time he, time, he recognized the importance of this economy recovery. And he's doing an amazing job of allowing governors to start to look at their respective states on what's best for their states, not one size fit all, but he's right. pushing, opening up government back up. People want to go back to work. People want to go back and start their businesses again. Individuals want to uh, go back to where they were prior to the pandemic. And this president is opening that door. So we need him to lead us through this crisis and to get us back on our solid footing again. So I'm honored and proud to serve and to help President Trump any way and in every way I can. And thank you all very much for having me on your show. Thank you so much. It's an honor to have you. Black Americans are supporting Donald Trump because they know exactly what he's done for them lately and for four more years. That's the real news for today. If you'd like to get involved with Team Trump, go to DonaldJTrump.com or download the official Trump 2020 app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. I'm Laura Trump coming to you from my home in New York, encouraging you to stay safe throughout this crisis. Thanks for joining us, everybody.